I think we got very close to making an important point, and I'm going to try to get to where we actually get to the point. The uh, new Graham bill on sanctions does have sanctions on European interests who have a deal with Russia on the gas pipeline. So if you think it's a bad idea to sanction them, you're really opposed to the new Graham sanctions bill because the Graham sanctions bill in section 236 says any entity that does business or invests in any Russian energy project outside of Russia, it's a bad idea. It gets to a larger question. Is trade a good or a bad idea? And I hear from Dr. Haas that generally trade is a good idea. I hear from others that trade is a good idea, even with our adversaries, maybe even more particularly with our adversaries. If we're going to wait until China has a perfect human rights record and is a democracy and looks like America, we will never trade with China. All right? If we're going to do the same with Russia, we will never trade with Russia. And none of this is an excuse to Russian behavior. But my goodness, you have to at least in diplomacy, think about what your opponent is saying. What is Russia saying? They're saying the, Grams, the new Graham bill would be the equivalent of economic warfare. We're, we're talking about cutting off pipelines. I see the pipeline as a good thing. It, interconnectedness between Europe and Russia is a good thing. It makes them less likely to fight. Why would you want to fight somebody who buys your oil? You know, it's a good thing for us to be interconnected. Trade is a good thing. And so I think we need to rethink where we are on this. We need to think, do we have enough sanctions? We have lots and lots of sanctions. We need now to, to ask the question Dr. Haas asked. Are we at a point where the overuse of sanctions and tariffs will set back U.S. economic and strategic interests? So I couldn't disagree more, but it's important to know what's in these bills before we say we're for them, because to say you're for them, but then you're against uh, any sanctions that would affect our European allies. That's specifically what the Graham will do, and it's specifically why the Graham bill is a terrible bill and that we should not entertain. I'd like to go to a, a ne another point, though, and this is uh, for Dr. Haas. You mentioned that NATO is in our strategic self-interest. And that's a conclusion, and a lot of people would agree with you. I think that's a conclusion, though, that is uh, so general that maybe could be examined more specifically. So, for example, um, if we make the argument, is France, the alliance with France and England in our strategic national interest, our self-interest? I think you probably have a pretty, uh, pretty impressive case and not a whole lot of pushback. Um, but really, Montenegro is not France. Macedonia is not England. And uh, I think the question really becomes, and I think if it were honestly asked, I think we would say they're different. And we would say that, well, does, does Montenegro actually increase our national security by putting them in NATO? Or do they, do they possibly increase our strategic risks? And I think there are times in our history when we have seen alliances that actually uh, cause reaction and uh, action and reaction in such a way that leads to war. I mean, most historians that look at World War I say that alliances were part of the problem and that these tripwires and blind allegiance to alliance was actually part of the problem of World War I. We've been passing resolutions around here like crazy. If it's a sanctions bill, it'll pass. If it's a bill in support of NATO, it passes. So, I mean, there's not really a, a problem with the will of uh, people saying they're behind NATO. What I object to, though, is that people say, well, any willing aspirant that qualifies should be admitted into NATO. I think that dilutes the effect of NATO to a certain degree. But I think it also is... is uh, ignoring basically what the response is from our adversaries to this. And I think George Kennan put it very well in 1998 when he said, if you expand NATO into uh, Eastern Europe, what you'll see is a rise of militarism and nationalism and aggressive leaders. And even uh, Dr. Haas, even though you've been a supporter of expanding NATO, you said in 97, speaking of opponents, that opponents of a larger NATO predict that NATO's eastern expansion will, provide, will provoke a hostile Russian reaction, weakening the position of responsible forces and strengthening the hand of Western nationalists. Now, you went on to really not agree with the opposition. You agreed with expansion. But I think there is some point at which it's too much. You've admitted that Georgia and Ukraine may be a bridge too far at this point. And so, really, I think there has to be some discussion. Do we want everybody in NATO? Are there, is there <laughs> no limitations to who will pit in NATO? Does it dilute the value of NATO? Is it provocative? And people say, oh, you're giving credence to Russia's arguments. No, but we have to know what our adversaries think if we want to change their behavior. We have to know what they think. They've been saying since Boris Yeltsin who we did like and got along with better, but they've been Gorbachev, Yeltsin, every one of the Russian leaders have said it is provocative to expand NATO. 